but we gotta dive into here pretty quick. And we gotta get into these scriptures, amen. I know you've been there, they're hot, and they always taste best when they're best when they're fresh, amen. I was a little uh, uh, perturbed by the welcome this morning. I just gotta get open. I, I don't know if Matthew was uh, you know following me around during my quiet times this week. <laughs> But I actually have uh, been studying out 1 Kings, right? Last, last week we went over chapter 17. And so I thought to myself, I really want to go over chapter 18. Oh, come on. <laughs> so and so I'm so excited. We're singing songs. And Matthew gets up here and he goes, turn to 1 Kings 18. Oh, you nuts. But I hope this morning, as I, I want to continue our study here. We went through 1 Kings last week. Let's, let's continue. We went through chapter 17. This morning, we're going to go through chapter 18. Yeah. The title of our lesson this morning is, The God Who Responds with Miracles. Woo. And I believe we've got to get back to believing this is the God we worship. Yeah. That God's response to how we act and do when we worship Him, when we give Him what He calls us to do, His response is amazing. Yeah. He responds with miracles. 1 right. Kings chapter 18. Come on. We're going to be picking it up here in verse 20. Now, now for all of us uh, last week, we remember we're looking at the life of this prophet named Elijah who had been called by God last week, he had to rely on the ravens. You guys remember that? Yeah. And then as we were reminded there in contribution, then he's called to go to this place, and there's a woman who's going to take care of him, but she was gathering sticks to make some food for her and her son so she could die. And then even right after that, the son of the widow, he dies. And so it brings him back to life. So we're a challenge to trust more than we've ever trusted, yeah. to give more than we've ever given, and to save more than we've ever saved, to save souls, amen. amen. And so now we find the prophet, he's challenged to go back to the king, Ahab, and to once again call Ahab back to God as well as God's people. We pick it up here in verse 20. The Bible says, so Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get the two bowls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves and then cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bowl and put it on wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who responds by fire. He is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. We stop here. We're going to look at the scripture this morning to be challenged about a God who responds with miracles. Our first point, miracles through the faith of one. There's so much within this passage. Number one, he gathers all of who? Of God's people. These are not like, you know, all the, the quote-unquote heathens and the pagans and the worldly and the, the darkness. And, no, the Bible says here, it's literally God's people. It would be for us the modern day. It's the church. Yeah. And he challenges them. He says, listen, enough is enough. How long are you going to waver between two opinions? You know, here we are. It's 2020. I believe today we live in a society that lacks conviction, totally. yeah. Yeah. if we're honest. Well, what do you believe? Well, I don't really know. I, don't, you know. I just kind of feel like maybe it's this, maybe it's that. I don't, really, I don't really have an opinion or a conviction about why I do what I do. And we go, wow, I can't believe that existed. God, that, that, this existed in the Bible. Yeah. <clears throat> it's no different then than now. The only difference is we have Wi-Fi. Yeah. That's really about the only difference. <laughs> but they just, they wavered. Ah, oh, do I believe God? I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, they didn't even say anything. And that's how we are today. See, Elijah, the prophet, for us to be the prophet, the prophetess, wherever we go, we've got to have deep conviction and be able to take things head on. Yeah, man. He wasn't trolling, right? He wasn't passive aggressive. The Bible says here he gathered people. He said, listen, come to my house. Bible talk at Mount Carmel today. Come on. Yeah. All right, my first point. 
how long are you going to wear between two opinions? I got two questions. What's your name and how long are you going to wear? <laughs> wow, this is intense. <clears throat> you called them out. And for them, they're just like, oh, hi, my name's Tyler, and uh, I'll answer the question later. Can you go to the next person? <laughs> Right, that's what it means. Like, wow. But miracles come through the faith of one. Because God's people had now <laughs> gathered around these false prophets. Yeah. 450 for one false god and 400 for another. 850 false prophets for one. And he called it out. He wasn't like, hey, you know, someone's struggling. He's like, I'm the only mm. one left. Wow. You see, we've got to understand, I mean, for us, we can look at that and go, man, this is a tough situation. The majority are totally against them. But no, no. See, when you are with God, you are the majority. Yeah, yeah. Come on. And a lot of us, we don't walk with that same faith when we walk into situations. You go, wow, you know, my family, the majority of them don't believe in God. Where I work, the majority of them are following false gods. For me, the majority of my life, no, no. See, when you are with God, God, you are the majority. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The world tries to teach us to accept whatever they want, whatever is the latest trend, fad, or policy. However, <laughs> let's not care what the world wants or thinks, but what God wants us to do. Are you with me? Your church. Amen. You see, Elijah didn't just magically get to this place. God had worked in his life throughout one chapter, right? Chapter 17, to get him prepared. Yeah. You've got to believe wherever you're at, God is working with you. Maybe you're not the one right now. You go, I want to go before and call everybody to repent. You've got to get yourself to repent. You've got to get yourself to walk with God. Why? So you can be a miracle worker. Yeah. yeah. You've got to get a conviction. A lot of us, we, we, we go, well, you know, maybe my friends, maybe my family, maybe my job. I mean, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. No, you got to get a conviction. You are the only one yeah. at your job. You are the only one at this campus. The only one in your family. Why? Because if there were others, they'd be doing that same thing. If people in our lives were true Christians, then they'd be trying to go after you. We're like, well, you know, no one's ever shared their faith with me, but maybe they're Christians. Wow. You know, no one's ever called me out on my impurity, but maybe they're Christians. No one in my family. In fact, what you see is the opposite. You see divorce. You see immorality. You see drugs. You see a life that's destroyed, and yet we still struggle as that person walking with God. Wow. It doesn't mean we become self-righteous. It doesn't mean we by any means have anything that's better. In fact, we don't. In fact, we know the truth. We know what the Bible says, and yet we can still not obey it. Dare we say, that's even worse than someone who doesn't know the truth. Yeah. Oh, no. Miracles come through the faith of one. See, with God, you're always the majority. Without God, we're just another statistic. Yeah. We're just a speck of dust. <laughs> on a floating rock through infinite space. That's what the world believes about God. That we're just an accident. That we're just a happen chance. But what is it? See, in God's eyes, you are special. You are honored. You are treasured. You are wanted and you are significant. And that's how we all need to feel this morning in God's church. We need to remember it's God who does it for us. I think the question for us isn't how great are your problems, but rather how great is your faith in the God who can change the situation. Amen. Here we are, 2020. It's the year of visions and dreams. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe all of us, we've got to be around visionary people. And we've got to be around those who are going to dream great for God. I'll tell you what, later, don't wait later this year. Get a vision right now. <laughs> don't wait till 2021. Get a vision right now. Get a dream for God, what God wants you to do right now. And we all got to pray to make it happen. As we even talked about last week, you only trust and depend on someone that you're close to. Elijah was so close to God that he understood, well, I can do anything with and a lot of us, what happens is we want God to somehow fit in our life. God, I love you. I would really love for you to help me on Tuesday. I would really, well, actually, no, uh, God, let me send you a text. God, I can't make it Tuesday. Let's do Thursday. 
God, Thursday doesn't work. I'll, I'll do my best on Sunday. And we start to like rearrange our lives to, to where God can fit in. Rather than rearranging our lives around God first. See, what's the reality? You can't help your wife, your husband, your marriage if you're not close to God. You can't help your children, your family, if you're not close to God. You can't be a good employee, friend, or student if you're not close to God. We need to stop wondering, why can't I have an impact? And we need to go to the impact maker yeah. who can give us faith so we can be the difference maker where we are. Simply, we need to plan our day around our walk with God. Is your walk with God the number one thing that you plan? and prioritize in your day. If it's not, then you're not going to have the strength to be the difference maker. Then you're not going to see a God who responds with miracles. And then you're going to be confused. You know what I'm talking about? Because you're like, I believe in God. God says the Bible and he's going to respond. And I, like, I go to church and I go to midweek and I even sang really loud. I did all these things. Why is God not responding? Because you don't prioritize God. Yeah. And God's not going to prioritize someone who doesn't prioritize him. Yeah. He's going to love you unconditional, but a relationship is 100% conditional yeah. with your church. Yeah. And a lot of us, we need to start rearranging our lives and get radical about yeah. this. But that would mean I'd have to wake up. That would mean I'd have to not do this. That would mean I would have to be like, yeah, yeah it's all about you. Right. Let's rearrange our lives for God. Right. So that God can use us to be the miracle worker through the faith of one with your church. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I want to challenge us all this week to share your faith in the outnumbered circumstance. That much like Elijah, who went before everyone and said, how long will you waver? He was direct, he was abrupt, he was loving, he had a plan, he went after it because he was walked with God. Let's walk with God and let's share our faith every day in the outnumbered situations, in our families, in our classes, at work, in our neighborhoods. Perhaps you just need to start sharing your faith first with, first with yourself. So that you can share your faith in the impossible. Situations. Let's keep reading here in 1 Kings chapter 18. Come on, bro. Come on, Verse 25. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bowls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bowl given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted, but there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he's deep in thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he's, a, he's sleeping, he must be awakened. Amen, campus? Amen. Verse 28. There, so they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Wow. We stop here. Our second point about the God who responds with miracles is false gods only produce pain. Wow. False gods only produce pain. I mean, things got interesting here really quick. What they thought was so great and so wise is starting to look pathetic and sad. I mean, they're dancing, they're shouting, they're doing it, and then they just start cutting themselves. They're bleeding everywhere. These false gods are only producing pain. And many of us, when we're not close to God, that's simply what happens. Yeah. Yeah. We convince ourselves, man, my job, my race, my life, my family, this guy, this girl, whatever it is, if I just have it in my life, it's going to make me happy. If I could just get, God, you're not enough. I need this. I mean, all these 850 others said that's what I should do too. I mean, it's what the world says I should do. I mean, the church is telling me, like, be pure? How can be pure? Look how the world is. The church is saying be sacrificial. How am I supposed to get my second car? How am I supposed to buy a house? How am I supposed to get what I want? Come on, bro. And you go, no, no, brother, sister, you've drifted so far. <clears throat> yeah. And then you know what happens? Your life gets filled with pain, yeah. with suffering. And then instead of accepting you're actually the, per the reason of that, you're the perpetrator, you're like, oh, God did this to me. <laughs> I mean, how come no one's here for me right now? Where, where, where's the brothers and sisters? How come, I mean, like, I'm suffering. And we're like, because, bro, sis, we told you. We warned you. We, like, pleaded with you. We begged you. You went to a false god. Wow. Yeah. And it only produced pain. Come on, Tyler. 
You know, I, I, I love Elijah. He's challenging them. He's being bold. The Bible says he's like taunting them. He's like, oh, what is your God? Is he asleep? Is he traveling? I mean, where is he at? And, and believe it or not, Elijah was, was not doing what was right. He was becoming self-righteous. And I think oftentimes, if we're not careful, even as Christians, in the midst of doing what God wants us to do, we start to become self-righteous. Yeah. Right? I mean, I've never heard of a time where being self-righteous converted somebody. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was really convicted by how self-righteous Tyler was. And I was like, man, I got to study the Bible. I mean, I was really inspired by how, you know, how indignant and prideful he was. So I said to myself, man, I got to go after this. Right? No, no, no. We've got to be bold. But we've got to be direct and loving, church. Yeah, you with me yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Elijah, the Bible says, was a man just like us. Yeah. We are men and women that are going to have weaknesses. It doesn't make an excuse. It doesn't justify. But we can't let it stop us from being how God wants us to be, to be that miracle worker, to help people understand false gods yeah. only produce pain. Come on, come on, bro. We see the, these false prophets... They're, they're literally cutting themselves. They're slashing themselves, hoping that, that that's going to provoke their God to respond. That's the world today. Yeah. Yeah. People today will do anything to get the attention they desire. Yeah. How they dress, how they act, yeah. who they have to hurt to get what they want, to do whatever it takes to get the attention that they think is so important yeah. to have. You know, this morning, we've got to ask ourselves a similar question, much like them. We've got to ask ourselves, who do you bleed for? Wow. Wow. Jesus or the world? Wow. Good point. But more importantly, you go, okay, well, I believe I believe for Jesus. Well, well how do you know? Who gets your first and your best? Wow. Oftentimes, someone else gets our first yeah. and our best. Mm. Our families get our first. And our best. You go, bro, you're saying don't help my family? No, no, bro, bro. <laughs> you're bleeding. Because even putting your hope in your family is just going to produce pain. Yeah. Wow. We put it in our job, man. If I just, like, I'm going to bleed myself to death and get this promotion. And you know what happens? It's the same exact response as what happens here. You pour yourself out. You do all these things. And you're trying to get satisfaction. You're trying to get approval from these things that won't give it to you. And it's the same response. No one responds. No one answers. And no one pays attention. Wow. We squander our best to something that won't give anything in return. Come on, Tyler. But what's awesome is when we give it to God. God responds in ways yeah. we couldn't even Come imagine. On. God responds with miracles. You with me, church? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you know who you plead for? Well, who gets your first and your best? We need to be those who give our first and best to Jesus Christ. Yeah. I believe that more of us need to start stepping up and not see God's kingdom as an organization, but seeing God's kingdom truly as it is. It's God's family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of us, we don't give that much to our family. We show up when we have to, but outside of that, we're not family. Wow. Right. You know, bro, you know, I'll see you Sunday. High five. You know, you, know, you can't come over to my house. Um, no, I'm not going to go over to your house. Um, you know, I come to church. I'm a little upset because the way the chairs are. Where's my coffee? I, I pay for this, so we need to, like, step it up here. Come on, bro. Maybe I'm the only one that's got those thoughts. Mm, come on. Not come on, bro. We with you. You see, miracles are going to come when we start bleeding for God and for one another. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to see this room get packed. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you get, like the echo is no longer there because it, the reverberations are bouncing off people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We've got to have a heart that, that, that goes beyond what God wants us to do. But God, what God wants us to do is pour it all out. Yeah. We need to start putting our best into God's kingdom. Yeah. Well, that's going to mean, yeah, you're going to have to sacrifice your future. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have the career that you want to have. You're not going to get to move to the areas that you want to. You're not going to get to always, because it's not about us. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when you're standing before God, you're not going to be like, you know, God, it was great. But I was really, can I, can I be honest, God? I was a little upset. I was really hoping for a better race. Yeah. Can we talk about that? I know it's, it's 2020. Can, can we, can we re- remind? Let me show you if you hear things, God. Like, look, look, look what I did. Mm. I mean, uh-oh. And you wouldn't even give me a raise for that? Okay, so, so because you didn't give me that raise here, can I get like an upgrade in heaven? 
You know, sometimes we do that, right? We like we call the airline. You know, airline, you messed up. So, so I expect. How are you going to fix this? <laughs> right? They got the order wrong, so you go back. Hey, you got my order wrong. So because you got my order wrong, I expect this meal to be free, and you're going to give me another meal for free. <laughs> and so that's how we can start to treat God. We're not going to be in heaven talking to God like God, you owe me. No, you know what I'm saying? No. In fact. When you get the, your life replayed before the eyes of God, you're going to be like, man, why didn't I do more? I, seriously, that's what I was focused on? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, what was I thinking? What was my heart? I mean, this for that. I mean, I could have done so much more. You know, you're going to die with like a bunch of zeros in your bank account and it's literally just going to go to the government or something. Like, man, how many souls could that have saved? Right? Man, I was so focused on this, this career that actually didn't give me fulfillment. And I watched my kids do this and my life do that and everything passed before my eyes. Can I go back and redo it? You see, let's live as those that don't live with regret, but live with the fortitude to live out God's plan for our lives and to go after it with all of our hearts with mere church. Come on, yeah. Come on, bro. Our third point as we fly through here and close out this passage. Come on, bro. Miracles come. Through a restored covenant. Miracles come through a restored covenant. Let's keep reading here in verse 30. Then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. They came to him and repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. <clears throat> Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, your name shall be Israel. With the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it large enough to hold two seahs of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bowl into pieces, and laid it on the wood. <laughs> then he said to them, fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it a third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, God, the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you're turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burnt up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil. And also licked up the water in the trench. Then all the people, when they saw this, they fell prostrate straight and cried, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. This is powerful. It's incredible. Yeah. Elijah gets everybody there. He's got great faith. He proves them wrong. And we see the boldness start to emerge. Yeah. Now, I'm not a man of science. But I've done some research about fire. Come on, and bro. the three things that fire take, right, are fuel, air, and a spark. Right. And so I was a little perplexed because here he wanted to start a fire and he used this fourth ingredient. I don't know if you guys caught it. It's called water. <laughs> Science has now proven that water doesn't help fire. <laughs> I learned about that on Pokemon, amen? <laughs> <laughs> So, here he is, he's like, you know what, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to call it on fire. Put water on it. Put, no, 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 more water. Do it again. To literally, it's like saturated and soaked. It's coming out of the trench itself. He's like, now we're ready. Now we're ready. You know, did Elijah have to do this? So why would he do that? That's an interesting question, huh? Yeah. Come on, Come on, bro. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he was thinking to himself, you know what? I've got to really show who God is. Yeah. And the more transcendent the miracle is, the more glory it brings to God. Yeah. And so, again, God didn't tell him to do this, but he did it anyways. And a lot of us in our relationship with God or in our sacrifice, we go, oh, I don't want to do that. That would make me look stupid. And I'll tell you what, great faith looks stupid. Yeah. 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 And a lot of us, we just don't want to look stupid. And when you don't want to look stupid, you actually end up looking stupid. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You're like, oh, I'll never do that. And then we just like live a, faith, a faithless life. And you're like, bro, you're stupid. 
Like, oh, I'm not going to listen to that direction. Oh, man. Sister, stupid. Yep. And so rather living by great faith. Yeah. Come on. You're going to look stupid either way, amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> I think for us, even when it comes to, to our Bible talks, we don't want to go share our faith because we think we're going to look stupid. Oh, I don't want to like talk to my neighbors. I'm gonna look stupid. Talk about it, bro. My coworkers, I'll look stupid. Wow. We've got special missions coming up. Yeah. yeah. Like, do we have to give special missions? No. No one's gonna like, you know, like, all right, well, come find you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you're like, well, I'll give you one jar of water. Oh. No, no, give me three jars of water. <laughs> give it to the point where it's just like, whoa, this is crazy. This is unreal. And so when we call on God, say, God, this is what we've brought before you, and we call it down, it's such a miracle that not only are our brothers and sisters are inspired, but the false prophets, yeah. the world itself is like, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And the world is watching us. Yes. Yeah. We've got to be those that have great faith. <clears throat> and understand, miracles are through a restored covenant. I'll never forget, for, for us as a church, we've gone through some ups and downs. Yeah. And one of the, the, the great ups and downs for me was really back in, in 2016. It's crazy to think that's four years ago. Oh, and wow. for myself, I, I really lost vision. I said, God, I just I feel so discouraged. I mean, I've tried to pour myself out in all these situations <coughs> rather than my relationship with God. Yeah. And it's only produced pain. Why would you do this? We weren't seeing great miracles. You'd even transitioned a couple times and what God wanted us to do. And, and, and God put an incredible couple in our lives, Richie and Elizabeth McDonald. Yeah. I'll tell you what, guys. We need to be grateful for disciples. Yeah. 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 We need to be grateful that God puts men and women in our life to help us. Yeah. Yeah. Because what's the reality? It, it's a scary world out there. Yeah. And a lot of times we push it away rather than to, I need you in my life. Right. So they came and, and they really looked at my life and just called me out and said, Tyler, it's time to to stop making excuses mm. and to start making decisions. Wow. Because at that point, it was no longer my fault, it was everybody else. Wow. It was like, it was, it's, it's this wife that you gave me, it's this church that you gave me, it's oh, wow. this path that you gave me. I mean, I'm pretty awesome. Oh. I mean, I found this great dog. I mean, you don't find a great dog unless you're a great person. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> and uh, it, I, had to, I had to like, really check my heart, I became bitter. But well, what is bitterness? It's simply the, the, re, like the feelings that result from something that's hard to accept. Yeah. Yeah. And I just became sad, I became discouraged, I became faithless. And I got challenged, bro, you gotta get back and you gotta restore that covenant again. Yeah. I was like, okay, so great, so it's probably like some secret I've never heard of before. <laughs> it's like this new special, you know, spiritual milkshake that you drink every day. <laughs> And he's like, no, bro, you gotta read your Bible yeah. again. Yeah. Oh yeah, I read my like, no, no, you gotta read it like you did when you first baptized. Because yeah. when I was like, oh, man, I wanna stop it. Like, I gotta read more. Yeah. Right? Now it's like, oh, okay, I'll get through it. You know, yeah, it's cool. You know, what's my Bible app say? Oh, awesome. Oh, cool. Awesome. Anyways, uh, right? Or it comes to prayer. Yeah, I pray, God, pray fix them, pray, fix this, fix that, like all the things that need to be fixed, right? Like, yeah. I mean, the prayer this morning was so incredible. Just get back to the scriptures. Pray, God. This is what men and women have prayed for generations. Yeah. We need to pray generational prayers that are going to move God's heart, that are going to move our own heart, and get us back to a restored covenant. Amen. I think prayer is the most understated thing in our lives. Why don't we pray the way that we need to? Because we don't believe it's going to work. I mean, if you knew prayer was going to work, wouldn't you do it? Yeah. When you find something that works, you stick to it. Yeah. You're like, and you don't want to move it. A lot of us, we find an immovable object in our life for ourselves. It's a non-negotiable. I will not move my time. I will not move my schedule. I will not move what I wanted to. You go, what? No, this is for the kingdom. This is for God. Yeah. Yeah. Like let's nothing should be off limits in our life. Come on. Nothing should be untouchable in our lives. We should be the most transparent, the most flexible, the most willing people in the entire planet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's who we're gonna become, amen. 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 I want to wrap it up here in, in a few minutes, but, but I was thinking about this here. 
this week. How many times in the Bible do you see Jesus actually reading the Bible? <laughs> like a few times, right? How many times in the Bible do you see Jesus praying? All the time. Like that's all he did was pray. And a lot of us, if we're honest, we spend so much time in the Bible. And it's great. Don't get me wrong. But we spend so little time in prayer. Jesus, when he was going through a hard time, he didn't go to the Garden of Gethsemane and read his Bible. He went and he prayed until he literally bled from, from his, like, from his uh, uh, sweat vest. It's like it's crazy. It's intense. It's bursting. He's got his heart right. And a lot of us, we go through a hard time. You're like, man, I just need to read my Bible. And I just want to, and I'm like, no, 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 I'll pray. But I need to find the scripture to rebuke this sister, to rebuke this brother. I got to, like, get in. No, no, no. Rather than being like Jesus and going to pray, I want to challenge us. You need to pray more this week than you've prayed last week. Some of us, I pray it isn't that easy because, like, well, I didn't pray last week. But I want to challenge you. You pray more than you read your Bible. And watch what God does. Come on. You pray more than you read the word. Not because you, oh, well, that just means I just won't read the Bible. Because I have to choose. I don't have enough time in the morning for one or the other. Because I tell you what, this is immovable in my life. I can only do one. So, I, you know, you got to wake up earlier. you got to sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. you gotta, you got to fast from Netflix. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stop going on Facebook and Instagram and start looking at this. Yeah. And a lot of us are super guilty. That's I'm, I'm not going to watch anything. I'm just going to read the Bible until I get through it. Yeah. Yeah. we got to have that heart. Come on, God. we got to go to God. See, when you have a restored covenant, God responds. Yeah. I'll never forget, you know, the, the story didn't end with just me being sad and depressed. Yeah. That'd be an encouraging way to end the lesson. <laughs> but... We, we got together back in July as, as a leadership group. It was our Bible talk leaders meeting. It was July 3rd. And, and I, I just said, okay, God give us a vision here. We're going to do something radical. It's okay. It's the 3rd of July. I want to celebrate the 4th of July. And everyone's kind of like, you know, there's typical Tyler. You know, it's a day. Now he wants to plan an event. <laughs> and uh, that's what we want. All right. So. So I said, no, 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 you don't understand. We're also going to do that, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, I want to celebrate. We've never seen as a church four baptisms in one month. I said, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pray and fast. We're going to go after it, and we're going to celebrate the 4th of July, the 4th edition. And once we get there, we're going to have flat, awesome time. So... Lo and behold, uh, Shay and I were going to be leaving in a couple weeks for the Global Leadership Conference that year. So I said, listen up. It's not just me who's going to believe this because we're like, wow, this is really close. Like, you're going to do this. I said, if anyone doesn't believe it's going to happen, I love you, but please step out of the room because we're going to be a room filled with faith. And it was awesome. We prayed about it. The first week, nothing happened. (laughs) The next week, Nothing happened. It was so encouraging. God, God, answer us. The Lord, he is God. They put a lot of water on that. It's about to look real stupid. And it was incredible as in that last week, God didn't give us the 1st of July, the 2nd, the 3rd, or the 4th, or the 5th, or the 6th. He gave us the 7th of July. a restored covenant in our lives. For us this morning, it's no different. Our cry for us is not the 4th of July, it's a hundred for the Lord. And I believe with all my heart this year, this church, we're going to get to a hundred for the Lord. The call of the hour is to get back to God and see Him do powerful miracles more than we thought possible. If you're visiting, stop bleeding for the world and let Jesus' blood set you free. Study the Bible, become a true disciple, turn yourself in, and get baptized into Christ for what he wants you to do. Amen. Family, God only needs needs one to produce a miracle. You are that miracle that God has set. You are the one that God has said, 
you're going to change the world. He didn't make a mistake. You're not insignificant. You're not just a speck of dust. You're not a loser or a failure. You are a prince, a princess in the kingdom of God. You've been given the authority. And it's time for us to go back to God, believe that he's going to respond, to capture the momentum, to make the most of all that God has done, and that each of us is going to be focused in our ambition to be an Elijah where we are, to bring God all the glory, to have our God respond. And thank you, and God bless you this morning. Thank you so much.